I'll say up front that I performed these tests a few weeks ago and when I sat down to create the YouTube video for it, I thought to myself, this data is a little bit flimsy, probably not worth going ahead. I plan to do a much broader series of sprint tests where I could be more confident in the validity of the results. However, I then came into a very busy, intense period at work, interviewing physios for a job we have vacant, and then I caught COVID for a second time. I got so frustrated by these delays, I decided to put this information out there anyway, and we'll just call it a pilot. So on with the show. I've been testing shorter cranks on my bike, much shorter cranks. I'm 192 centimetres tall, and I took the 175 millimetre cranks off my specialised tarmac, and I replaced them with 160 millimetre cranks, way shorter than anyone would normally recommend. I've done this to help look after my hips, which are way older than the rest of me, and suffering from early onset osteoarthritis. My second bike is a Trekamonda, which still has 175 millimetre cranks on it, and this allows me to make some very interesting comparisons. So far I've seen that the shorter cranks improve my maximum power output on a full-on, out-of-the-saddle, maximal climbing effort. The shorter cranks maintain or even slightly reduce my energy expenditure on a steady-state ride. Shorter cranks even improve my FTP score, and now I've seen some remarkable results for short sprint efforts as well. And these are all just the fringe benefits that I get from a pedaling range of motion that I've chosen to be more comfortable for my hips. The case for using shorter cranks just gets stronger and stronger the more I look into it. In this test, I've done a series of flat out sprints on my indoor trainer, comparing the maximum power output on the shorter cranks versus using the longer cranks. So to recap at the moment, I have two road bikes. My specialized tarmac has 160 millimeter cranks. My Trekamonda has 175 millimeter cranks. My method for this test was to set up on the Wahoo Kicker indoor trainer on the shorter cranks first. I did a five minute warm up, then a flat out five second sprint effort, then a five minute recovery, and then a second five second maximal sprint. I then immediately switched to the Amonda with the 175 millimeter cranks and did exactly the same thing. Then I reversed the order, went through the same process with the Amonda first and then with the Tarmac second. So there were eight sprints in total performed during that afternoon, four on each bike, and each time the Wahoo Kicker Core was recording the maximal power output. Now, as I've never done this before, I actually set up my Wahoo kicker with a virtual 2.5% incline, worried that I might run out of gearing without this. However, how this felt on the trainer compared to how it feels on the road is a much more rapid deceleration every time I changed gear in preparation for each sprint. There was far less coasting effect, which felt weird and artificial and made each sprint harder. However, I kept it consistent throughout all of the sprint tests, and next time I'll keep the incline at zero. As per all of the other testing that I've done so far, this little pilot study came out in favor of the shorter cranks. So what were the results? Well, the first thing I note is that the data confirms that I am not a sprinter. My maximum power output is way higher at a slow cadence pushing up a steep hill than on a fast, flat sprint effort. Anyhow, across all of the eight sprints, only two of the efforts registered above 900 watts, and both of those were with the shorter cranks. The other six efforts were all between 800 and 900 watts. The best result on the 160 millimeter cranks was 972 watts at 92 RPM, which was sprint number two. The best result on the 175 millimeter cranks was 861 watts at 107 RPM, which was sprint number four. The top result on the 160 millimeter cranks showed 13% more power than the top result on the 175 millimeter cranks. The average power on the 160 millimeter cranks was 900 watts. And the average power on the 175 millimeter cranks was 839 watts. 
So the shorter cranks gave 7% more power on average than the longer cranks. So how did they feel? Well, to be honest, I could not say that sprinting on the shorter cranks felt any better than sprinting on the longer cranks. They did not necessarily feel more powerful. Perhaps this was partly because I was actually having trouble shifting gears with my tarmac, which has SRAM, Axis, wireless shifters, and my rear derailleur battery seemed to be playing up and it often needed a few quick taps to actually change to the next gear. I think if this was not the case, I might have actually cracked a thousand watts. This is far from a conclusive test and there are a number of things that I'll do differently when I repeat it. I'll use more repetitions, I'll mix up the order a bit and maybe I'll even conduct the test over a few different days. I'll keep the indoor trainer at zero incline and I'll make sure before I get on the bike that the rear derailleur is functioning properly. All told though, I've now examined bike fit biomechanics, uphill power, steady state heart rate and FTP testing. And every single one of these tests tell me that as a 192 centimetre rider, six foot four, I'm better off on 160 millimetre cranks. Once I'm rid of this COVID bug, I'll redo this test with a longer and more precise protocol. I've also got a date with the Wahoo System 4DP test, which I'm absolutely dreading. I mean, I'm looking forward to. Bye for now.